Thanks, guys. Uh, just honored to be here. Um, excited. Uh, our players are certainly excited. Uh, Indianapolis has been a spot of a lot of college championships I've been able to watch uh, growing up and uh, excited to um, be able to play in such a great venue. And uh, sounds like we're very fortunate we're not going to be playing outside uh, based on the weather that I'm hearing about. But our guys are excited and uh, getting back to work and uh, ready to to uh, take another shot and go play these guys and got a lot of respect for Alabama and, and Coach Saban and everything they've been able to do. And <clears throat> we know that we've got to play one of our best games and uh, our guys are excited for that opportunity. Hey, thank you. Our first question today will come from Dennis Dodd. Dennis? Herbie, uh, what is it about the leadership skills of great linebackers? Um, I'm talking about Nakobe in your case, but I wonder if you'd, you're aware of Will Anderson Jr. and they play similar roles for these two teams. I wonder if you could just kind of expand on that topic. Well, I think that position is uh, a position that ties, you know, the front to the back. And uh, when you're in the middle, kind of, it takes uh, extreme uh, toughness to play. Uh, at that position, and you got to have some coverage skills. You got to understand the defense inside and out, and you certainly can become a, a very good leader. You know, if you had a quarterback on defense, I think it would be at the linebacker position um, because they make so many calls. And and Will certainly does that. He's an exceptional rusher, twitchy, plays so hard, high motor, physical toughness. You know, a lot of the same things you can say about Nakobe, although they're they're they play different positions. Next will be Chip Towers. Chip. Hey, Coach. Uh, yeah, I wonder if you could talk about the dynamics of, uh, you know, playing a, an opponent two times in close proximity. I think you were part of that with at Alabama and LSU and and certainly in a game of this magnitude. And and if a uh, second part, if, if you could uh, touch on this, you alluded after the game, Talking about Alabama had a five or six hour head start on getting ready for this game. Uh, I think you've been on both ends of that as well. Is that is that a true advantage? Uh, even those few hours can can make a difference. Uh, I don't know. This makes a huge difference when there's when there's a normal space between the game. You know, we we played in a unique situation last time we played them with the. Rose Bowl um, turnaround to national championship was extremely short. Um, and, and with the Rose Bowl not changing their date, it made for a West Coast flight. Um, it was a really, really, really quick turnaround. We actually played the, the earlier game in that scenario and uh, they played the later game, but the turnaround was quicker. This turnaround is a little different because the amount of time in between them, I, I was just referencing uh, that we finished a little bit later and, and, and didn't get home till the next day. Uh, but when you're playing a rematch game, I think, uh, you know, a lot can go into it in terms of, uh, you know, the, you got to be careful because you've got things in your breakdown, games in your breakdown that that might change this game in terms of, you know, we didn't have the SEC championship game, obviously, in our breakdown, then um, the playoff game and uh, what tendencies changed, uh, what matchups you're looking for, you know, who's in, who's out. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into it, but at the end of the day, you're, you're really not as worried about what they're doing. You're worried about what you're doing and uh, how well you can do that. It's the most important part. Next will be Mark Weiser. Mark? Kirby, uh, your guys obviously responded well to the tough loss against Alabama. Is it harder now to have that same edge coming off a game where so much went right or is given everything that's on the line, is that not an issue at all? Explain the question, Mark. I don't understand exactly what you're asking. You're, you're saying coming off of uh, playing well, how does that affect this game? Mark? I think you need to unmute. Yeah, yeah. And I was saying, yeah, because they uh, they were coming off a loss that, that they had a, you know, maybe more of an edge, you know, wanting to prove something that, that, uh, that they were as good as, as they showed earlier in the year. Yeah, I mean, we're focused on playing them, and, and it, you know, this game is irrelevant of the the, the game we just played, and um, it's really separate from the SEC championship. Other than obviously everybody I'll be using 
that tape to look at matchups and, and look at tendencies and things. But um, we're certainly we, – we, we've worked really hard the last, whatever, 30 days at getting better at us. And it was never about Michigan or – Alabama or Cincinnati, it was about us. And that, that doesn't that doesn't change on who your opponent is. You you try to scheme to to find matchups, but at the end of the day, we've been trying to get our players better, regardless of who we're gonna play. Next will be Anthony Dasher. Anthony. Hey, Coach. Uh, good morning, afternoon, whatever it is. Now, I don't double check on uh, on Brock Bowers. I know you touched on him. He had kind of dinged his shoulder a little bit a couple weeks ago. See if you had anything, any further word on him. No, oh, Brock's good. Hey, he, he was good in the game. He's he's that that same shoulders bothered him all year. To be honest, it's it's not like it's something new that just came up. I mean, it 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 it, it bothers him from time to time at practice. Um, it happens to a lot of our players, to be honest with you. I had it when I played. So it's something you have to, you know, just deal with. And in the offseason, we'll get to look at it and see if it needs um, to be repaired and, and, and surgically or whether or not it's something that he can rehab and uh, continue to strengthen the muscles around it. But it's not – he's it, it, a football player. I mean, it's, it's not going to go away in the season. So a lot of our guys are dealing with that. Next will be Lane Higgins. Lane? You know, Coach Smart, um, I had a question for you kind of about the dynamic that Alabama occupy or like kind of the mental space it occupies in the heads of either your, you, your coaching staff, your players. It seems like it's sort of the Crimson Tide have taken on a sort of bogeyman quality for Georgia in that they are the benchmark um, to which, you know, this program is often compared, but also one that has seemed to always get the best of your team. How do you handle that kind of mental dynamic when you're preparing your athletes to play them, um, you know, for the second time in such a short span? First off, what is the bogeyman? Was it, what did you reference it as? <laughs> I said Alabama is a bogeyman uh, to Georgia football. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that is, so it's hard for me to answer that question other than they've also been a problem and a thorn in every single team they played that <laughs> besides just ours. So uh, we have that in common with a lot of teams that have played them. they got a really good football team, really good coach, and a really good program. It starts with uh, with good football players, and uh, they've done a great job uh, at recruiting those. And, and I think when you look at the the skill set of, of some of the guys they've had come through there, and the, I know myself just looking at the last two or three times we've played them, I think somebody said either six or seven first-round wideouts uh, have all played. And that, that, that skill set is pretty unique. I don't think there's any team in the country that's had however many it's been, the run they've had on those, and, and that makes it – you know, you, you got to play well. You you got to you got to play well in the red area. You got to play well situational football. You can't turn the ball over, um, and expect to beat good football teams. And um, and those are things that that we have done when we played them. We turned it over, and we can't do that. But as far as the mental capacity and mental mindset of our guys, they're they're excited. They got another. I earned another opportunity to go play a really good football team, and uh, we've got a really good football team. So our guys are physical, uh, excited, and looking forward to, to this opportunity on the biggest stage there is. Next will be Mark Schleybaugh. Mark? Kirby, um, you guys didn't get much pressure on Bryce Young in, in the first meeting. What can you do to, to change that and how important of a, a dynamic is that in this game? Yeah, uh, it's really important. I mean, they 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 – they did a good job. Number one, he did a good job of moving around in the pocket, uh, of creating time. Um, he's really a, way more elusive than people give him credit for. Uh, extremely good athlete, has uh, elite spatial awareness. He knows where people are, where his people are, where he's protected, uh, where he's going with the ball beforehand. And um, it wasn't for a lack of trying. And uh, we, we, we brought a lot of different pressures. They did a good job um, picking those pressures up. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, there's four or five guys that are one-on-one -on -one up there. Somebody's got to win one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, a lot of times you're better at pressure when you're not on the field as long and you're, you're winning some third downs. We had some really critical third down losses that, uh, that hey, they didn't beat us. We busted. And uh, you can't do that, not beat a good football team. You're giving them extra snaps every time that happens, and, and you, you can't do that. 
Next, we'll hear from Ralph Russo. Ralph. Good afternoon, Kirby. Um, I wanted to ask you, I think one of the remarkable things about these two programs is that obviously you recruit a lot of good players, but so many to the point where I think people will ask, wow, you know, if you want to play early, wouldn't it be better to go someplace else? Because there are so many good players on these rosters. How do you sell in recruiting even if you don't play right away, this is still the best place for you to be surrounded by these other great players. Because the truly great players understand that no NFL scout or general manager or head coach has ever called me and said, how much time did Roquan Smith, how much time did the Nicobe Dean play as a freshman? They, they, that's not what they care about. You know, the, the, what, what those guys care about are the intangibles, um, size, speed criteria, uh, leadership skills, how good a football player are they in year three. That's what they want. They start evaluating those guys really hard in year three. And, you know, you want to be the best player you can be in three years. So where do you go to do that? You go where you can compete against really good people in practice. You get millions more snaps in practice than you do in a game. So you want to go against the best. Where does the best pass rusher want to go against the best tackles? Where's the best tackle want to go against the best pass rushers? Where am I going to develop the best? Where have they proven that they can take uh, me from a really talented player to uh, a disciplined uh, team buy-in, uh, NFL-type uh, offense and defense in special teams that they can grow? And, and the, the kids that are looking for that – they can find that at these programs. So it's, it's, it's an easier decision than you think because it's not just about playing early. I've seen a lot of guys play early and not get better, not grow, not have the same nutrition, strength staff, and they might not leave as good as they would have, but they played early. And um, I've seen some guys get impatient, you know, uh, here and there and leave and, and have regret over leaving because if they had stayed, uh, they would have been a better football player for staying. Next, we'll hear from Mike Griffith. Mike. Uh, hey, Kirby. Um, obvious storyline is Kirby Smart versus Nick Saban. I know the, the players on the field decide it, but this is your sixth year uh, building this program. I guess this will be your fifth straight top 10 finish. Do you, do you embrace that, or is it something that you, you would prefer to downplay? And then, two, uh, just in terms of how fluid – is it in game? I think we've seen you lead at halftime and three out of these previous four matchups. It, it just looks like a chess match from the outside. How true would that be? I think it's been games of momentum and, uh, you know, they've done a good job of the momentum in the second half. Um, and each game has been different and it, it'll never be about he and I, I know he won't make it that and I won't make it that. Cause that's, that's for you guys to do that. It's, it's about the players. It's about, those guys making plays and putting them in a position to be successful. Um, and the guys that the players that, that make the, the, the meaningful plays, the plays that are conversions, the, the red areas, the, the turnovers or not turnovers, the explosive plays that determines the outcome of games. Uh, um, not he and I. Next we'll hear from Jeff Hall. Jeff. Hey, Kirby. Um, 